I think on this record, like Tony Hyam influence is even more pronounced. Yeah, well, I mean, Sabbath, like, it's always, I mean, yeah. ever since the first record, I mean, it's just, there's always Sabbath floating around there all the time. Oh, yeah, sure. So, you know, Sabbath and Zeppelin and all the stuff I love, Allman Brothers, Skinner, uh, you know, and inside with the ballads, there's always like either Stones floating around, Allman Brothers, Elton John, uh, the band, Neil Young. You know, like, I mean, that's like, as far as like, when I'm doing all the mellow stuff, that's why I usually always draw inspiration from. It's just, you know, because that's all the stuff I listen to. You know what I mean? I, I think with everybody, it's always a reflection of everything you love and you listen to. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, so, I'm definitely a mixing pot between yeah, the things. You know what I mean? It's just because that's what you're on a steady diet of and that's what you digest. And it's in your DNA. You know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, without a doubt. I mean, you know, and the same thing with my solos and everything like that. I could hear all, all the guys that I love and that I'm inspired by. And, you know, whether it's Frank Marino and John McLaughlin and Al Demiol and St. Rhodes and, you know, all the guys that you're inspired by that, you know, because that's your Rolodex of knowledge, too. You always got like this uh, chorus love in the, yeah, in the sound, right. you know. Where does it come from, you know? Because it's not necessarily in your influences. Well, I think Randy's. I mean, Randy, Randy maybe Randy's did. live yeah. tone was was awesome. I mean, you know, because he had that chorus on there, it was yeah. like, really wide. But uh, Randy and Frank Marino, you know, I yeah, mean, Frank's really live tone. He's got the chorus on there and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just basically from those those two guys. You know, I mean, just really have amazing live tones. Yeah, it's you know, to so make things like yeah more wider, like more like like you're doubling yourself. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. It's, a, it's just a nice. It's warm and round, and it's, it's huge. I just like it. It's okay, okay. But live on the records, you know, it's, I don't use it on the, you know, because I'm doubling the guitar yeah. already. So. so you don't need much. natural. It's just a natural course, you know. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, it makes sense. And live, you, you got another guitar player with you as well, so it's like you get like a triple guitar. Yeah, like well, it's quad. It's a quad. <laughs> yeah, now, quad you got, yeah. You got two guys playing, and then you got the, the chorus pedal on, so it's just massive. Wild audio. I think like uh, so far you're selling guitars only. You do use a wild audio head, right? Yeah, I've been using my heads now. The heads on on the record. I use the record. heads on the Book of Shadows record too. So I've had the protos right now. Me and my buddy George were just going talking about figuring how we're going to do the distribution and everything like that. But the heads are ready to go, and then we're going to be making little practice amps and the whole nine yards. Okay. So yeah, so that's that's in the works for sure. So that strings, the effects, the pedals we're going to be doing next. So the whole thing. You okay. Know what I mean? But you were fencing like a JCM eight hundred before from Marshall, I think. Yeah. Well, I so have my eight hundred. I have my eight hundred with me here right now because this okay. is all. So we don't travel from America with all the stuff. So I have my own yeah. back line out here. So it's all my, it's all my Marshall stuff I've always used. You know? Okay. So but my wild audio heads are back home. You know, okay, yeah, for the US. And how much does it, does it differ? You know, did you like try to do like kind of a JCM clone, or did you want to add some stuff like? Which you think I'm missing from the Marshall one? Or? No, just like with all my when I did my Marshalls, it's just like just make that, but just more of it. You know what I mean? So because mm. it's it's as basic as you can get. You know what yeah. I mean? Because even when I you know when I buy used ones and stuff like that back in the day, you just plug into it and it sounds good. You know what I mean? So yeah. you, you don't need a manual. You don't need you just turn <laughs> it up, plug it in, turn it on, and then it's a great. It's just consistently a great guitar tone. Okay. And you know, if there's something in there you don't like too much highs or too much, you just turn it down. Yeah, yeah. And then you're like, oh, it sounds great. You know what I mean? So it's the same kind of voicing and all that. Yeah, I've never, whenever I've done anywhere, if we had to use rental gear or anything like that, you get a JCM 800, you plug into the thing, bang, bang, and you're like, ah, oh, good, it sounds great. Okay. You know what I mean? So. Okay, okay, so what are you going to be in, like, power stage wise? Because I know, like, you, you're not just using ES 34, no? You, you're using, like, a. No, I, well, what happens is that my EL 34's got broken one day the amp got dropped or something like that so we had to get it fixed and I remember I was we got the head got fixed and I remember plugging in there I was like man it sounds fatter what what did he do differently he said oh he said he put 65 50s in there because yeah. he didn't have any EL 34s I was like wow I mean it just sounded you know your classic Marshall tones those EL 34s so but the the 65 50s to me and the, uh, the KT 88s are very similar too but the 65 50 and KT 88 it's just the to me, it's just a bigger sound. It's it's just bigger, you know what I mean. So and it's and it's just big and round. So I mean, you know, that I mean, I noticed it right away. You okay. know what I mean? I just like wow, it's you know, it's real noticeable. So uh, 
so ever since that that day, I was just like, yeah, put the sixty five fifties in there. Or KT eighty eight. So, and so in wide the audio head is going to be with a sixty five fifty. Yeah, yeah, either that or the KT eighty eight. You know, because okay. I because I, you know, in, in the Vatican I could at a low volume you could just and then I'd put different tubes in the same head and then we'd A B it yeah. and so you could really tell the difference. I mean, whether even with the tubes, you know what I mean. That has so much to do. There's so many variables that go into the tone. You know what I mean? Because yeah, whenever totally. anybody would talk about Eddie Van Halen, even so, voltage, I mean. Like, yeah, the <laughs> and that, and then plus the EQs you're going through, and uh, you know what I mean. Yeah. So I, I think, uh, yeah, before you even realize what it, you know what you're going through, the speakers, you know what I mean. Yeah. Spe that has a lot to do with it too. You know what I mean. Yeah. So I mean, a sixty like a, my three hundred watt EVs aren't going to break up as much as you know a Celestian a twenty five watt speaker. Totally, you know what yeah. I mean? It is it's just. There's so many variables that go into it. So you're doing like, yeah, your variation of uh, Explorer, Les Pauls, SGs, Flame V, like with your kind of design on yeah. design. Yeah, I'll tell you, well, you're just tweaking classic designs or whatever, you know. I mean, you know, for the first batch of fiddles we out, and then, I mean, obviously the next, you know, it's going to be different shaped guitar designs all the time, you know what I mean? But you take a little bit of this guitar and a little bit of that one and another one of that one and just put them in together in one guitar, you know, and tweak them and make it your own thing. So, I mean, that's the cool thing about having your own company. I can do anything, yeah, whatever you, you know want, what I mean? Yeah. Just tweak it and bend it and, you know, do whatever, do whatever we want to do. And the cool thing also, I don't know if you use it, like, because you're known to use like Gibson guitar, but with like a, some kind of special configuration because you like maple neck. Which is not like the yeah. standard thing, you know. He was like in the late seventies, I think, or not in era, but yeah, totally. But uh, and you use the EMG's pickup, like eighty one, eighty five, still, I think. Yeah, sixty five. Uh, you know, uh, I mean, well, it's just the EMG eighty one, eighty fives. And uh, you know, my signature uh, pickups. So. And uh, and so yeah, I guess those one like the while you are with like the maple neck. Yeah, and then you got the Tone Pros hardware on there to go over tuners, so it's already got all the mods on it and the upgrades that you would put on a guitar. Okay. You know, so it's all, it's all mod, you know, it's all upgraded out. So, you know. And great. the maple thing, like on the neck, because the neck is really important in the electric guitar. To me, it's what does the job? Is this the neck? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so it gives you like a more cutting tone, I guess, like more like yeah, brighter cutting. Yeah. Than I mean, it's so funny. Inve was say, telling me, he said, Zach, he goes, I, I never realized how much the neck had to do with the tone. He goes. I remember in the studio, I was putting on the same body. I put on like a maple neck, then I put on a rosewood neck, then an ebony neck. I couldn't believe the, the difference yeah. in the tone. And I was like, wow. He goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, with the same body guitar, but I, I put all different yeah, necks on the guitar. And he said he was shocked. Yeah. Like he was shocked that it made that much of a difference. He, he thought it'd be like, eh, you know, you really can't tell. And, and those guitars I made like in South Korea, right? And, uh, yeah, South Korea is. Really and, uh, awesome. Are you using like the same like uh, are they coming from the like or do you have like some custom US shop? Or, no, or? It, well the custom shop over at Schechter is where I have one of my the Warhammers is you know we made a USA model and but uh, no the the consistency on all these fiddles man is just absolutely mind blowing oh you know because uh, you know they make when they when they set up the guitar when they get done when they get sent to LA to the shop out there. And then they get set up again, you know, okay. just from traveling or whatever. But I mean, yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, and every night when we're doing, you know, the VIP guitars, I'm playing a different, I'm different guitar every night. You know yeah. what I mean? Whether it's, you know, so like we're doing, you know, if, if I'm playing three of these in the night, you know, they're, I'm giving them away at the end of the night. So <laughs> I don't, I'm, I'm going up there with a different guitar every night and they're consistently amazing i mean every like i never i was never like wow well, this one sounds so much better than the other ones never yeah like if you said zach you know i got a batch of 15 guitars he said zach can you pick out two good ones you know for my nephew and my one cousin or whatever i'm like they're Don't all good yeah. <laughs> there is no you know, just pick any one you want just grab two of them you know what i mean it'll be fine okay yeah. but that's cool to know because you know some people could be like backing up because it's made in asia you know but to know that you can use those in a professional environment, you know, you know, you can make people think, okay, it's good enough. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I, I, I mean, but to me, I mean, if it's a good guitar, it's a good guitar. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. But you know, there's still some people who are like, yeah, one well, made in USA or made in Japan. You know, but you know what yeah, I mean? Or I think that's whether it doesn't matter. Yeah. To me, it does. It's never made a difference whether it's made in USA, England, 
Canada or South Korea or it's made in Norway. I, you yeah, know, yeah. I mean, the whole thing is is the craftsmanship and the guitar. You know what I mean? Funny. Maple is maple. Uh, yeah. You know what I mean? And, you know, ebony is ebony, and you know, mahogany is mahogany. It's ebony fretboard, by the way. Yeah, yeah ebony fretboard. Okay. So, and uh, so it's also yeah, differing so, from the rosewood. From yeah, Gibson, yeah, without a doubt. But I mean, you know, woods are woods. It's it's mm. always the craftsmanship of the of the instrument. That's what you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah sure, totally. I mean, that's what you're that's what you're yeah. getting. I mean, you know, whether you're buying. You know all the guitars. I mean, whether it's a BC Rich, a Yamaha, a Gibson, a Fender, uh, an Alembic, or a, you know, I mean, the bottle. It's the craftsmanship in the guitar. You yeah. know what I mean? Totally. You know, I mean, I could take you. You're you're building these wild audio guitars, and it's just like, oh, everyone loves the guitars. We could take the same shop out in California. I could move it out to Norway. Yeah. You're the one making the guitars <laughs> on the same machines and everything. It's just yeah. now we're made out in Norway. You yeah. know what I mean? So it's, it's, it's to me, it's always the craftsmanship of the instrument. You know what I mean? So yeah, totally. And talking about like string and stuff, like do you, uh, what's uh, are you tuning and string gauge these days with Black Label and Odzi as well? You know, because it's not like as low as it used to be, like on some like yeah, thirteen well, years of well, blues, now, now really I mean, low. Well, you the know? new tuning, you know, because after we were doing the Zach Sabbath thing, mm -hmm. we're tuning uh, uh, C sharp. Yeah, you know, it's a, it's a whole step and a half yeah, even yeah. lower. So. Uh, that's what the tuning is. So that's what the tuning is we used on the uh, on the new Black Label album. Okay. So I mean, obviously, any of the like the day that heaven had gone away and and uh, you know the, the only up. words and stuff like that and you know uh, nothing left to say. The three mellow ones. That's that's all standard. Yeah. Four forty. You know, because if yeah. I'm going to use the piano or the Hammond and stuff like that, so. And uh, what string gauge are you using? Um. Pretty much, what is it now? Either like 10 to 46, the lighter gauge, you know? Okay. Yeah, or but, you know what I mean? But but either use a heavier top, you know what I mean? Because you're because we're so low, uh -huh. you know what I mean? Either yeah. either a 56 on the bottom, you know what I mean? Yeah. 52 or a 56. Yeah, it's like 10, 40, except for like the last one. Yeah, yeah. like a mix. Of and seven. before you used to, yeah, like I said, like 13 years of grief or stronger than death. Yeah, that was so really 60, low. That was a 60. I mean. 60, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think it was maybe in B or something. Yeah, just like. so it stayed tight. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because otherwise, it's just so <laughs> floppy. You know what I mean? Okay, okay. 